people doing the beef, water, and salt carnivore diet. Michaela uh -huh. Peterson's been out there talking a lot about it. Uh -huh. right. um, other people who have done so, I'm not saying the carnivore diet because lots of people do the carnivore diet massively high in vitamin A, where they're eating bacon or lard. Well, science has a thing called lard factor that they figured out was in pork and they couldn't figure out what it was for a while until they figured out it was vitamin A. Hmm. So they actually named it lard factor. It's, it was vitamin A. So they might be doing tons of eggs. They might be doing tons of liver. They might be doing tons of other organ meats. They might be doing tons of butter. So, or cream, uh -huh. so all high in vitamin A, all plenty high in vitamin A that, that if, they, if it's all combined, you get problems. So the beef, water, and salt version, this was one of the things that I, that I really lashed onto on Matt Stone of 180degreehealth.com. He mm -hmm. wrote an article that actually got me to look into Grant's books. And he was talking about a gentleman who has been doing the carnivore diet for the beef, water, salt version for 17 years. And he's raised his kids on it. His kids were like, I don't know, eight years old, maybe 10. Mm -hmm. And his wife does it too. His wife got rid of her Lyme disease. The kids are totally healthy. They have no obvious health problems. The thing I always like to ask about what modern medicine likes to talk about is I go, why don't they have scurvy? If somebody ate a beef, water, and salt diet for 17 years, shouldn't they have died of scurvy? You would think, right? What is the, what therefore is the relationship between vitamin C and vitamin A? Do humans still need vitamin C? If we don't eat vitamin A, because that's what they're doing. They're on a vitamin A free diet oh. and they're not eating. They're not needing vitamin C. Other people have theorized there must be some anti-scorbutic or anti-scurvy factor or anti-scorbutic factor. And I'm like, no, it's not that. Just they're a just lack of poison. vitamin A, right? Just a lack of vitamin A. Lack of there vitamin are papers A. in the past, scientific papers entitled, people can go find them, hypervitaminosis A and scurvy. Oh. Why would they name a title of a paper that? Um, it's mm. just, it's, it's so funny. Like when I go and I look at old sailors diets when they get scurvy, right? Tons of vitamin A, tons of it. They were cooking their fish in the fish oil. Like it's, like, it's crazy stuff. That is so um, fascinating. Hmm. So Doc and when they finally got some oats, they, they got less scurvy. So they liked eating oats because the fiber in it probably absorbed some of the vitamin A and made them feel better. That's so, so anyway, a ton Yeah, no, it's so fascinating because when you look at vitamin A and a lot of people are just looking at the conventional sort of alternative, um, you know, information about it, it's like when you search, you know, DHA, you know, if you search benefits of DHA, you're going to find all these amazing articles, over 2,200 articles about it. But if you search like lipofuscinosis, you know, uh, this lipid peroxidation as a result of DHA, oh. you start getting into all kinds of other search results. You know, it's crazy. Mm. So uh, carotenoids are part of the structure of lipofuscin. Really? Just so happy. Yeah. I have a paper on it. So what this happens? Is what all day. I could do this all day. <laughs> yeah, it's just so crazy. All right. So, Doc, we got a ton of questions. So let me let me get back to the chat room because I feel remiss and I feel like people are asking questions and we should get to them. Um, uh, Maxim in the chat room says, is there a difference between vitamin A detox and ISOT retinoin? How do you pronounce that? Isotretinoin. 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 Okay. Yeah. Isotretinoin is the kind of the more pharmaceutical name of 13 cis retinoic acid, which I talked about earlier. It's okay. another name for actinine. It is a natural part of the vitamin A detoxification pathway. Okay. Um, and that's actually, I that may be one of the parts, I don't know right off the top of my head, it may be one of the parts that needs to enter into the cytochromes, Okay. which is what glyphosate slows down in terms of <clears throat> vitamin A. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so yes, isotretinoin, um, we do have people, one of the things I do to, if somebody was damaged by Accutane, um, Grant and I are actually in discussions. I had a theory this weekend that I sent him over email for us to discuss about how 13 cis retinoic acid, Accutane, isotretinoin might in a negative feedback loop, shut down the vitamin A detox before it. And that's why people end up with like lifelong problems mm -hmm. from this medication because people take this medication and often they get symptoms. Mm -hmm. And then when they stop the medication, the symptoms never go away. And then you go, well, if they're not 
if they don't have the medication in their system, what did it break? What did it do? Are they just toxic now and they can't get over it until they get it out of their system? Um, but it, it does something. And one of the things I do to help with medication damage to the detox pathways is called homeopathic detox therapy that I've been integrating a lot because even when people start avoiding vitamin A, there seems to be, there, there can be backups in the system where they're not getting stuff through. They start, when people start avoiding vitamin A in their diet, uh -huh. this is an important thing to know. This is like the intox and detox. The body will not start detoxing anything until it has less stuff coming in. So people start on the vitamin A detox and they start to feel great. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then their body gets low enough, their intake gets low enough that then they start dumping it and they feel bad. Just like I said, they feel bad. We feel bad when things are high in the blood. That's where it really messes us up. And so when they start dumping vitamin A, if they can't get rid of it fast enough, which is the part I'm really tweaking right now that I'm I, massive jumps in knowledge, but if they can't get rid of it fast enough, then it builds up in their system and they may not feel good. This is why we get problems with vitamin A is because we can't detox it fast enough most times. Mm. So... So Natalie in it's the chat room, Doc says um, she wants to know maybe there. This is the reason for her constant headaches. Could that be the case? <laughs> go go <laughs> Google vitamin A toxicity headaches. Really, classic symptom. Um, idiopathic. The, the the medical term for it most times is idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Really. So idiopathic. We don't know the cause. Uh -huh, right. Intracranial inside your cranium, your head. Mm -hmm. hypertension, high blood pressure, high blood pressure inside your head that they don't know the cause of. Classic. <laughs> that's Classic. So, Vitamin A. Oh, that's so crazy. I, I, I was right. telling my wife about why coffee might affect her a certain way because of what I just learned about how coffee affects the vitamin A detox pathway. So, and if she has too much coffee, she gets a headache. And I'm like, oh, I know now. Interesting. I get it. So, yeah. Go Gosh, ahead. The human, Next one. Yeah, the human body is just so incredibly intricate and, and can um, so magnificently put together. It's amazing. All right, yeah. so let's get another question here. Going down the list, looking for guys that you put it in all caps. Uh, Stormy says, cautions when eating a plant-based and very little meat. So it looks like maybe Stormy is eating a plant-based diet. Um, what are the cautions, do you think? Um, so... Well, I mean, the, I, I'll be blunt. I'm not a fan of vegan diets. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the biggest, I mean, one of the biggest things, if people are eating tons of plant-based stuff, they're going to be depending upon the color of foods that they're choosing to eat. Like the main colors of carotenoids are yellow, orange, and red like tomatoes, but not red like berries. So OPCs, polyphenols can be red. Carotenoids can be red, like in tomatoes or peppers, but so red's a little trickier of a color. You gotta, you gotta ferret it out a bit more. Um, so if people, if the part of the food that they're eating is yellow or orange or red, like tomatoes or peppers, they're going to be getting a ton of vitamin A. And if they're juicing, they're just taking in tons of carotenoids, almost from whatever source they're doing it from. Then you need, so you need zinc to run the vitamin A detox pathway. Vegan diets tend to be very low in zinc unless people are just chowing down on pumpkin seeds all day. Uh -huh. And then vegan diets tend to be very high in copper. Mm -hmm. Having a lot of copper in the system will also deplete zinc, which you need to detox vitamin A. So we need the generally we need zinc from meat to help run the detox pathway. Another thing that we need to run the detox pathway that is found highest in meat is uh, vitamin B3, niacin, niacinamide mm -hmm. is, is needed to run the dehydrogenase system. There's also, you need protein, you need enough protein. You know, people can get that if they really focus, but you need enough protein to make retinol binding proteins, mm -hmm. right? So if you have a low protein diet, you're not going to be making these, these binding proteins to protect yourself. Um, taurine. Taurine is an amino acid that is both protective against vitamin A and it will bind to retinol in the liver and be excreted as retinotaurine. So it's part of the vitamin A detox pathway. Okay. 
There's the only the only foods you're gonna find.